Hi, 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 hi. Hello, hello, hello. Everyone have, I hope you're having a wonderful day thus far. This is Jade and my phone keeps on popping things up and cutting me off. So we're going to try this again. All right. So what you're going to be needing to make this journal, this little journal, if you don't have one of these little books, you're going to need index cards. Okay. You're going to need cardstock or pattern paper or a cereal box for your cover. So we have our index cards, a cereal box, some scrapbooking paper. You could use cardstock and then you just use some pattern paper to make the cover pretty. So that's an option for you as well. But this is scrapbook paper and it has color on it already. You're going to need a stapler or embroidery thread with a needle on it. Okay, you can use an upholstery needle or you can just use a, an embroidery needle. If you have a book binding kit, you can also use that as well. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need whoopsies. You're going to need scissors. I'm using the printable pumpkin spice and everything nice that's available on my website. And of course, you're going to have some paper for collaging afterwards. All right. Now we're going to dive right into the video for today. So the dimensions are, so I went ahead and I did this for you. So if you want to screenshot it, so you have the dimensions, you can go ahead and do so. So I'm holding it still for a second to screenshot so you can get the dimensions. You're going to need six to seven pieces of paper or six to seven pieces of index cards. Okay, so why say six to seven? Well, it just depends on how thick your index cards are. All right, I am personally going to be using six. I'll be using six, so that's three. And this is six. Okay, that's what I'm going to be using. Because these are slightly thick, right? And then if I'm using the cereal box, it has some thickness to it. If I'm using this, because it's thinner, I might be able to get away using seven. All right. So it really just depends on what feels right to you. If you don't mind your little journal being bulky. Because in all honesty, this book is made with really thin paper. All right. And as you collage on the pages, it's going to get thick. It's going to be thick like this. So you want to be mindful of that. Hi, Oshin. How are you? So you do want to go ahead and be mindful of that. And decide if you're okay with the thickness of seven or more if you're using copy paper that you're cutting down then you can probably get away with using 10 pieces but if you're using index card you want to stick to six or seven all right now the dimensions for the paper because remember that our index cards, depending on the brand that you buy, they'll all be different sizes, right? So I just went ahead and I measured my index cards for you. In the case that you don't have index cards on hand, you still can make this journal, okay? And so the measurements are, like I said, you can go ahead and screenshot. I'm using centimeters just for everyone who is in the uk so everything works all well because you know the us metric system is different from the uk okay so i went ahead and i used centimeters and it's also a lot more accurate so on the long side the width should be 12.7 centimeters the height should be 7.6 so that's the width should be 12.7 centimeters 
and the width seven i'm sorry i just messed up the width should be 12.7 centimeters and the height 7.6 centimeters your center line will be at 6.3 and a half but that's like impossible to get the half so i just said 6.3 okay so you can just use your ruler draw some lines or if you have a scoreboard you can go ahead and do that if you don't have the index cards on hand you can use copy paper or mixed media paper like i had said now if you have index cards all you're going to do is just fold them in half like what i'm going like what i'm doing right here and like i said i'm using six if you're using copy paper go ahead and use 10 to 12. okay so this is all i'm doing fully knitted half because i have index cards i also debated whether i wanted to show you how to do it with copy paper but i think it's a little self-explanatory so i'm just creasing it to have a nice sharp edge and i may have to trim some of them down because like i said it is a bit bulky if you don't have a bone folder because i don't this is a pottery tool if you don't have that either because i'm aware that not everyone will have that you can just use the edge of a ruler see it works perfectly fine as well you can use the edge of a ruler or a pen or the edge of your scissor as well just as long as the color from your scissor will transfer onto your paper because we have to be mindful of that as well so we have all six of our papers nicely folded and you see when you put them together like this they're nice and even but when you start stacking them that's where everything gets a little bulky personally i don't mind it okay personally so you might want to trim it down and just be mindful that your scissor unless you have like one of those big industrial cutters won't go all the way down so what you can do because you're going to have that layered effect if you can see that I'm well you know I'm a little tired okay so you're gonna have so you can see it on this better so you're gonna have this thing won't focus okay so you're gonna have that layering effect right there so I'm going to trim that down and like I said you know you might run into not being able to go through it with your scissor so if that is the case I'm going to use a binder clip and I'm going to hold it together and I'm going to slowly try and go layer by layer. And so that's one of the reasons as well. You don't want to use too much so that your scissor will not work for you. Okay, or you can use an exacto knife. Where's my exacto knife? I have to hide it from my son. <laughs> I have to hide this thing from my son because he will want to touch mommy's things. If you have a child, you understand. So I'm just going to be using this cereal box um, that has coffee all over it. One second. All right, so don't get it messy. So you can just use your X-Acto knife and just go over it a couple of times okay until you have it all cut away if you don't have an exacto knife hi fern if you don't have an exacto knife just use your scissor take time take your little time and just start chipping away at that just know you might struggle a little bit with your scissors yeah like i'm gonna struggle right there i saw that so I'm just taking my little time 
and you can probably do this and try and cut a few pages at a time instead of trying to go through all seven because then it becomes 14 or 12 index cards and you know like I said they do have a bit of weight to them so it won't be perfect but I kind of have all of those nice and straight and so I'm going to use this side to take my little time and cut it I'm just doing it with a scissor just in case not everyone has an exacto knife but if you did you just hold it down and just slowly go through until you go through all 14 or 12 layers of cardstock like I said if you're using copy paper then if you use 12 pieces of copy paper that would give you 24 all right so those are your options and now we have a nice clean edge it's so pretty i love it i usually don't have nice clean edges <laughs> because i just like the layering effect but since we're not doing a junk journal we want everything to be nice and neat i'm going to leave the binder clip on that i forgot to mention binder clip in the list of things that we need now if you're using the cardstock what I went ahead and I, I did, I gave you enough wiggle room so that everything, it's not flush at the end. So I'm going to give you the dimensions for my cover. Now, if your index cards are larger than mine, you might want to put an extra centimeter and a half on that. All right. And like I mentioned before, my index card is 12.7 centimeters wide and 7.6 high and my center mark is 6.3 centimeters so that's if you don't have the index card use the copy paper if you have index cards you can go ahead and measure to see if yours are the same as mine and then my cover for this journal if i'm using the cereal well whether or not i'm using the cereal box or the scrapbooking paper or cardstock. My cover is 14.8 centimeters wide by 8.7 centimeters high. So that is 4.8 centimeters wide, as you can see here, and seven and 8.7 centimeters high. So you can see that here. I did it on this, but you can't see it so much on the cardboard. All right, and since this has some kind of decoration on this side, I won't be bothered to cover it. Now, you're probably saying, why did you use this? Because it's already kind of cut in the shape that I want, instead of having to rip out a whole 12 by 12 paper just to do this. Alternately, if you don't have that, you can use scrapbook paper or a cereal box. Make your half line, so the middle of this, will be 7.4 centimeters that is 7.4 centimeters is your center line okay if you have a scoreboard go ahead and score that if you don't you're just going to use your ruler with your pencil you're going to mark where that is at the top and the bottom you're going to draw a line and you're going to carefully fold it either with a bone folder the edge of a ruler or using the back of your scissor right here or or your um what do you call it or your pen don't worry about this this is coffee <laughs> you understand the struggle that I have because I do a lot of coffee stained paper so I mess up my scissor that's okay we're in a judgment free zone and so for this I would probably use this to cover it okay but I want to go ahead and make my crease before i'm going to show you i think some of you might know this already some may not since i don't have a scoring board hi patty how are you since i don't have a scoring board what i do is i have this old 
TP paper cutter and I use it so I line up my marks that I made it does it's extra work but you know what gets the job done and I line up the marks and I'm just gonna go in the groove a couple of times up and down because this is quite thick this cereal box is like a nice thin it's kind of like chipboard ish so I need to go over it a couple of times back and forth back and forth all right so here we are okay and it's slightly uneven as you can see that means I kind of didn't I kind of slant it okay that's not a problem it's not an issue all you have to do is just hold it properly sometimes this happens once you score it so all you have to do is just make sure all the points connect again and just rescore that and boom there we are it all lines up okay so that's one option that's awesome patty hi tonya now if you're using the scrapbook paper i'm just going to go ahead and cut this down my paper cutter won't fit in the frame so i'm using a scissor and it might not be the straightest cutting but that's fine that is fine now this is way thinner than my cereal box okay so if you had to choose if you had to choose what you're going to use to make your journal i recommend using the cereal box see so here how thick this is you hear how thick that is here how thick this is all right it's super thin so you're not going to get that much protection not that you're throwing this around like a ball <laughs> but if you're like me you may travel with your supplies like if i'm going somewhere and i know i'm going to have a long wait sometimes i do take a book or something i might cut some paper um sometimes i might do a little journaling once my page is pre-decorated so that's also an option that you have so you might just want to make sure you have nice thick covers for your journal okay so i'm gonna put this to the side i no longer need it and then you have two options because now we have two lovely covers now if you use your cereal box you might want to go ahead and cover that with some scrapbooking paper or you can use pattern paper that you buy you get in a printable i might use scrapbook um what you call this pattern paper from one of my printables and you can just glue it down and then fold over the edges so i'm going to do that in the event so i'm doing this two ways just so if you're using the scrapbook paper you know this is the easier way and if you're doing this i'm going to show you what to do so you know exactly how to do it okay and i think for the scrapbook paper i'm just going to probably fold these and staple them in and then stitch that in so that we have a greater understanding if you're just joining in, joining us here are the dimensions that we're using so the cover you can either use cardstock the pattern paper the cardstock the cereal box or the scrapbook paper for the index and here are the measurements so you can screenshot that or just write it down and here are the measurements for my index card we know that you have different sizes of index cards if you don't have index cards on hand please don't run out to buy index cards just to make this just use some copy paper and cut it down to size and here's the size on the paper so while i cover this with glue if you're feeling a little adventurous go ahead and cut down some papers and i'm just using glue stick of course this is not the most secure thing in the world the glue stick so I'm going to go ahead and put some liquid glue 
over the top of it but sometimes I like to use when I'm doing things like this I like to use two glues I don't know why it just gives me peace of mind I guess peace of mind you can also just stitch it That's awesome, Diana. I didn't see you come in there. How are you? All right. So I'm just going to spread this out. Spread this out. Make sure that it's nice and stuck down. Sure all our glue is nicely spread out evenly and we don't have any air bubbles if you have air bubbles that's also fine too doesn't matter it's okay it is okay so I'm going to clip the corners just cutting it on an angle there's really no right or wrong way to do this we're just taking off some of the bulk that's no problem you can always catch the replay that's what I love about replays and then you can probably cut this down a little bit as well so you don't have so much excess overhanging And then you can use another piece of paper to cover here if you would like to. I'm thinking I might just leave mine like that. We don't know yet. We are going to see how we feel about it. Let's we'll see how we feel about it. And I'm just bringing these over and just scoring it before I put my glue down. Just so that everything lies well together. Okay, I'm seeing that we're having a little bit of wrinkling and so I'm going to go ahead and make a little triangle right here at the top and at the bottom because there's excess paper and it is causing my paper to um, bulge and we don't want that so you're just going to make a little triangle at the top and the bottom it does not need to be perfect and from the folding I am seeing that I can cut this down a little bit more so I'm going to do that I don't want to take off too much now you can take off a little at a time but if you take off too much you can't add it back so I rather to just go through and do a little at a time a little at a time all right so here we go everything is all coming together and then I'm just going to glue this down and you have two options here you can use another piece of pattern paper and cover that or you can just use a little bit of um, what do you call it old book pages to cover that and I think that's what I'm going to do I just had an idea that if I cover the covers with the old book pages it's almost like a collage and I can actually use my cover as a page um, so that's another way that you can stretch what you got I'm going to cover that because I have a tendency to leave my glues open and they all get dried up on me I do that all the time all the time I just recently found a glue opened glued was spilling out and it glued one of the bags that it was into the ground so don't be like me cover your glues don't waste it I find that glue is a very special very special thing for us because without glue I mean I 
to be honest, you can sit by the journal or craft or um, journal. But I mean, it's much more better with glue. Also, I know I, I had a little um, investigating today, Diana, because I was like, I know the time changed, but I was not aware of, you know, what is the correct time. I just have a, had an idea. You remember if you joined me on Sunday for the Bible journaling session, we did this and we had this fun little thing that left over after we finished. And I just thought about it. You know, I saw it there and I was like, hi. I was like, hi, Jade. How are you today? And I'm like, you don't see that I'm crafting? And just like, use me. And I'm like, okay, fine. I just ripped that, but that's okay. I think it will be fine. I think it will be fine. I think it will be fine. I'm not measuring this. I probably should measure it. But I don't like to measure. I really don't. That shows you how much I love you guys because I actually measured the things to give you the dimensions that I'm using. I really don't like to measure the things. So I'm just using the width of my ruler. I'm taking off the excess. If you don't have this, you can just use pattern paper. You know what? I'm not going to bother to use it. I know, right? The story of my life. I think I want to just use the book page. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to commit and use the book page. Or you can just use a nice solid color here. Or you can just use a white piece of cardstock and put right there it would be nice as well okay all right i'm so sorry i'm really indecisive right now so what i've decided to do is just to use an index card since we're on the theme of index card you know we're figuring it out as we go along so my idea was obviously to use the book pages and i saw that and i was really distracted by it and wanted to use that paper from Sunday but we brought it on back okay since we have an excess of index well I have an excess of index card if you don't you can use copy paper the book paper full book page scrapbook paper whatever you have on hand so I'm just going to use this and I'm trying to find the edge I'm not going to use the part with the rule. So my index card has ruler lines on one and it's blank on the other. So I'm just going to turn it around and I'm just going to glue that down like that. But I do have a fun little idea and I'm going to do it. Of course, you don't have to do that. That's also fine you don't have to do it if you don't have it I can't help myself I really want to use a piece of it <laughs> I really just want to use a piece of it so you just have to understand me right now I'm just going to put a little bit right here in the center not a lot so anywhere the card it, the cardboard might show or you might just if you have extra bits you can patch it but I'm not going to do that this is really thin I'm going to put this right here because the index card is going to cover it like that but what I will do is make sure it is the same size as the index card because we want it to be neat because we're trying to make a neat book Normally, I don't care if it's neat, I just use my um, old book pages 
and I just tear things and it's never neat it's never even the pages are never even but since we're measuring let us make it neat if you hear her screaming in the background that's my niece she has found her voice she is one years old and she is enjoying screaming right now you know what we get when they realize oh my gosh i have a voice and i can use it i think some of my glue kind of dried up so i left it out for a little while okay so you don't want to bring it all the way to the edge and that's why i use this right here so we're not seeing the the cardboard right there in the center you don't want the, that to be all the way to the edge to hinder us closing our nice little book Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Oh, this is so adorable. Listen, this is a fun idea. I love that, Diana. You know what you guys can do? You actually can make a lot of these little journals. You have the tutorial right here. You can make a lot of these little journals and use them for stocking stuffers. That's a good idea. Or if you have a little craft fair in your neck of the woods, you can do a bunch of these. Set up a nice little assembly line. Get different color card stocks. And uh, if you're selling it, I would suggest using the cereal box and wrapping it with a nice pretty paper. Just because it would be a lot more sturdier, you see. It's like a nice book with a nice hard cover. I love it pretty i love it friends i love it and then we have our index cards i'm so excited you guys don't have a clue and then you're gonna put it inside how oh, cute is that oh my gosh can't wait to bind this up and then if you use the um what is this called again the scrapbook paper Excuse me, I'm forgetting the things. I'm just going to erase the pencil marking from this one. All right, and you know what you can do? I'm just having all the ideas for you guys today. Just having all the ideas for you guys. You can, so I'm just going to fold a few papers to put in this, and I'm going to show you both using the embroidery thread and the stapler because I want you guys to see um how to do both since i gave you both options so this is one two three four i'm using six so i'm going to get two more so i'm going to have six in both i could actually go seven because i'm using this and it's a lot thinner than that but let's just stick to the same amount um that i said before Awesome, I love that. That's so fun. It's a nice little fun idea. Three of everything. It's cute. And I'm just folding these index cards. If you had a scoreboard, of course, this would be a lot faster and a lot more accurate. But I'm here to show you. Even if you don't have that, you can still do it all it just might take you a little extra time and so this is real time just not sped up so you're seeing how long it actually takes to make it and of course if you weren't making a video like i'm doing 
and I'm stopping so that you can see what I'm doing, this would actually go a lot faster, right? Sometimes when we film things, it takes us a little bit longer to do. Because if I'm doing something like this, I would probably do it in an assembly line. So I would fold all my papers all at once. And I'll have them with paper clips. So I'd have six, 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 six pieces of paper all lined up. I forgot we have to cut this thing. So I'd have six, 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 six pieces, because I'm using six papers, all lined up. And then I use a paper clip or a binder and I clip them together. Then I will cut them. So I'm cutting everything all at once. And then after that, I am covering, I'm making my covers. Right? After that, we're gluing on the paper onto our covers. I'm just going to use the scissor again. Just making sure that everything is on the same level. So we're cutting a bit of the pages a bit at a time. We said we're not trying to strain our poor little scissor. We don't want it to cry and say, oh my gosh, you're abusing me. So we're going to take our little time, go a few pages at a time. And try to use the outer index card as a guide. And that looks beautiful. And now we can just go from the bottom slowly. Because we are putting a bit of force on this. Because it's going through a good amount of paper. We don't want to put ourselves. Okay. Now everything is nice and flush and all on the same okay then we can put this right here in the center I'm gonna decide that I want this to be my front it's a lot more decorative all right and I'm going to staple this one so I think it will be easier as long as my staple can reach all the way up there so what I'm going to do, you might need to use two paper clips for this or a few binder clips. So those are your options. For me, the binder clip situation, I have a tendency to just put them on my books and I lose them a lot. <laughs> I, I know it's ridiculous. But that's my life I keep losing them and I had a full tub of paper clips and it's the same thing because I always sometimes when I'm using the fan the fan might blow my paper and because I don't want my papers to blow away I might just use paper clips from time to time and guess what happens I forget that I put a paper clip on a book I take out two more and I do it all over again and then next thing you know I can't find the things I'm going to use binder clips put this one let me line it all up oh that's nice that is nice and that would be so pretty when you when you make them, Dinah, go ahead and share them so that we can see your beautiful creations. A lot of times when I do this, I typically make them and give them out. A binder clip are these little things. Do you see them here? So these are what is called binder clips. Some persons call them bulldog clips. Okay, so either this big one, this small one, and you have a, l a larger one as well. Okay, so my stapler is not reaching. Go figure. 
I'm going to look for the other, I don't think either of the staplers. I don't think either of the staplers will work. I have this stapler that has a little section where you can put a picture of yourself in. So I don't think it's showing that well. But I don't think either of them will work. And since I can't open the one up with my picture on it, I've actually had that for years. I'm gonna try and do this. So you're gonna open up your stapler of course it's not going to go all the way through but you're going to need something to press down the edges so this is also an option for you so you'd want to do it from this side this way through if you have a longer stapler if it will fit because this is right there on mine or let me try and see. let me try and see what i'm going to do since this is like flimsy because it's the scrapbook paper I'm gonna use I'm gonna do it from the back I'm actually gonna do it from the back where the back is and I'm gonna bend that side so I'm just gonna put these down just found remember where I put the rest like I said I have a tendency to put them on books and then forget where I put them. Alright. So. This is what I'm going to do. Make sure this side is really nice and secured. I'm even going to put some paper clips on it. You might think it's extra but. I just don't want anything to move. Alright. And I'm going to fold this. So if it gets a crease, that's fine because it's in the back. And I don't want my front to be creased. So we're really just trying to get this, trying to do this in frame as well so that you can see. I'm making sure that it is going straight on my edge. If it goes slightly off, that's fine because like I said, it's at the back. See? Okay, we have it right there. You seen that? Oh shoot! <laughs> oh my gosh, friends! It didn't work. It didn't work. I can't find my um, staple remover. Okay, but if your stapler is a lot, um, trying to do this without ruining my pages. If your stapler is a lot longer than mine, it will work. It will work. Okay, so you, you get the idea. So I'm going to just do this, like I said before. But in order for me to do this, I have to do it off camera. So you understand, I'm just going to do this right here. Press it down. When the excess comes through here, I'm just going to use the back of the scissor to um, make it... Um, curve. If that makes sense. So just bear with me one sec. Okay. So it went directly through the center, which is beautiful. And then we have it right here. And we're just going to use, let me use the scissor. As you can see it, we have those holes from our failed attempt. But I love this, you know, trial and error. Thank you, Diana. My birthday is on Saturday. Um, so, there we go. Perfect. And if I did that before, like I said, I wouldn't have made two holes but that's fine because we will be collaging it it's fine <laughs> it is fine okay and now we're going to do the same thing on this side so i'm just like i said i'm just lining it up putting the stapler here and i'm pushing down on the edge of my desk 
unfortunately. Um, I think. Okay. And yes, I am boring holes in the table, but that's fine too. That is absolutely fine by me. There we go. Perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto. And I have marks all over it from the binder clip. But we'll be collaging over it, so that is okay too. Okay. Here we are. Journal complete journal complete and so if you have a really nice if your scrapbook paper is a lot thicker than mine because you know you have some thicker ones these would and you get the Christmas pack with all those beautiful Christmas paper these are beautiful gift ideas right and what you can also do is write scripture so you decorate the pages and you write some little scriptures on these pages and you can just give them out at work to co-workers you know it's a form of evangelizing so that's a fun idea that you can use this for that's another fun idea and so we have this beauty I'm really in love with this I'm gonna say this and gift it to one of the young women in church I like doing that gifting the journals yes Patty like if you don't want to do something too big you know, you have a nice little journal, so it's manageable. Now, if you do not have an all, right, you can use your needle to make the holes. You can use a tapestry needle as well, because those are thicker, okay? So I have a tapestry needle here, and we have a couple of options. We can do a pamphlet stitch, so that's a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Or we can do a saddle stitch, but that's going to take us longer. So we're going to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Okay, so we're going to make our three holes. Now we can go ahead and measure so everything is nice and neat. I'm using the centimeter side. So I'm going to tell you where I'm deciding to make my holes. So I'm making the first one at one centimeter and I'm just coming down to the bottom and making another mark one centimeter at the top one centimeter at the bottom okay and you kind of want these to be even so from the that line that we made right there and here that's going to be five and a half okay so I'm thinking you know, my calculations might be wrong, but I'm going to put the center, it is wrong, <laughs> very wrong. Um, I'm going to put the center at three. I know it's wrong. All right, let me just not do that. All right, so our center is going to be 2.9. Okay, 2.9. It looks centered to me. So when we're binding, let me write that here. So if this here, this center, right, let me do it on this side. Hmm, let me do it here in a different color pen. So that you can see everything on one piece. So the red is the binding. So I'm going to write binding. Do you see that? How hot it is? My ink is just flowing out the pen. It's crazy. Okay, so binding. So we know here this center line is the center of our index card. Where's the ruler? Okay, I'm using red so you can see it better. So we have one centimeter here, one centimeter here, and in the center, we're gonna it's probably not accurate, but we don't care if it's accurate, okay. Actually, Jude, it is spot on. It's, it's actually accurate, guys. I'm proud of myself. So it's <laughs> 2.9 centimeters. 2.9. 
so this line right here and this line right here so this is one centimeter so you're going to make a mark at one centimeter that's your first in the center right here this is what did I say 2.9 centimeter that's a nine and this one let me measure it again this line should be at 6.5 so this right here is 6.5 cm when I post the picture I'm gonna try and translate all of these dimensions down below let me hold it up so you can take a screenshot if you are following along okay now I'm just going to make some holes now guys the cardboard because we're using a cereal box it's going to be a little challenging so if you don't have an awl use your tapestry needle or your embroidery needle or you can even use the tip of your exacto knife I've done that before but just be careful not to make that long just use the tip and just take your time and wiggle it or if you have an ice prick or an ice pick you know as Jamaica we like to say ice prick but it's actually ice pick so see if you just take your little time and wiggle it look look at that the needle comes out the other end that's okay Patty I'll see you next time thanks for joining okay see it's coming all the way out so you don't if you don't have an awl it works perfectly fine as well okay and you pull it through so that your hole gets a lot larger okay okay boom see didn't use the all so and that was all done with a needle so there's no reason why you don't need to have this it's just that the one with the curve the only reason why i'm using it is because that's what was threaded it already had the thread on it and i just decided to use it i'm trying to remember where's the front i think it doesn't really matter where the front is all right so you're gonna pull it through and you're gonna leave a piece hanging a little tail hanging down all right so and here it comes through the center you're going to go to the top up and through the first hole and out okay and you're going to pull it so it's tight you're going to go to the bottom hole and you're going to push that needle all the way through and you're going to pull it so it's tight you need everything to be tight you don't want your papers wiggling about and you want this right in the center now you're going to turn it over onto the back and you're going to put the needle in the center right back through where we came out in the first place all right and you want the threads to be sandwiching this bit in the center so i had to pull it there but we're going to tighten it back up okay so that one piece of the thread is on one side and the other comes out the other side i'm sorry you weren't seeing that forgive me all right let me pull it back out so you can see what i'm doing didn't realize that you weren't seeing me okay sweetie so you're going to push the needle through the back hopefully i'm in frame and you're going to go on the other side of this thread in the center okay one piece needs to be on this side on the right one needs to be on the left and we're going to pull tight Okay, so this is what you should have you're gonna pull tight because you need to secure your pages and make sure they don't come undone all right and you're just going to make a knot so you can cut the thread if you feel like but I like to make the knots before no a lot of the times I make a little dangly bit and you're gonna pull tight okay everything needs to be tight you don't want your book coming undone on you we're gonna make another knot I'm gonna pull tight again really tight and I, I, I'm gonna make 
a third one. Why not? Sometimes I just want to make sure that it's really secure and I'll make a third knot. Okay, just so that my mind is at ease. And there we have it. Our journal is complete. So that's our journal. We just need to give it another little folding. Okay, and so that it lays flat, what you can do is use a paper clip or another binder clip and just fold it like this alternately you can just put a heavy book on it so that it you're training the spine to just lay flat same for this even though it's thin it wants to be open and that's because we did the center so you just put a heavy book on it and it will lay perfectly flat now you might be wondering what are you going to do with the dangles you can put a little bead or something on it or you can feed it into itself and I'll show you what I mean or you can just put some glue on it and trim it low okay so that's an option as well or you can just do what I'm doing so you're seeing so you're just bringing it around bringing your needle under pulling the excess over and you're just going to do this until it's all gone onto your center thread okay if you don't want to cut it if you just want to be you know peace of mind that this won't come undone on you you can do that it's an option for you as well Sometimes when I'm doing this, I just use a little crochet needle so that it's easier to pull under. But I'm showing you how to do it with this needle if you don't have a crochet needle. You don't need to buy a crochet needle to do this. If you have it, perfect. If not, that's also fine. Shake it, let me see. No, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. So put it in next here. Okay. I can't wait to see it, Diana. And you can try and feed it back through that hole and have it come out there and just feed it under there. I, I see people doing that but you get the idea i'm not going to do any more i'm just doing that so that you get the general idea and then now you can trim it and you don't have to worry about it unraveling because you had um sewed it kind of go over under over under onto itself and you're going to do the same thing there's a knot on this edge and you're going to just do the same thing on this side i think it's pretty explanatory i don't think i need to do any more what I am going to go ahead and do is to end this video just because we did the, the journals and I don't want to keep you for too long. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few elements on my cover so you have a fun little journal. You can use it for a scripture journal. Of course, I'm using it to, you know, do some collaging in and I have two. I can gift one if I so choose, which I'm going to do. I'm going to gift one. I'm going to give this one. That's why I'm making sure that it's really nice and neat. And I didn't know I was going to gift it until I saw how gosh darn cute it was turning out. Oh, I'm Lee. Lee won. I had mentioned that in the live on sunday i'm supposed to create a post so lee lee won it was all done at random it's just a random um i put all the names on a little they have these giveaway pickers put all the names on it and i should have videoed it didn't next time i'll do that 
All right, and so, boom. Nice and finished, okay? So you can decide which way is front, which way is back. Well, you kind of have to do this as front. Actually, you don't because I kind of went all type of ways with the index card. So it really doesn't matter where is front and where is back. So there we have it. We have two fun little journals. Okay. So we have two fun little journals. Okay. And this is the original. This so for persons who don't have this little mini book that I'm collaging in. So I did this last week. For those who don't have this little mini book that I will be working in on Tuesdays, you can go ahead and make one of these. Of course, it will be slightly bigger, maybe by two centimeters, but that's fine. That's fine. You have a nice little book and you can make a whole ton of them and give them for Christmas or a little fun happy mail swap thing so thank you for joining me today I was going to do a collage on one of the pages but because this is a little long we're not going to do that today today is just making the journal and next week we can create all right so I was going to be using this but what I will do is take an element from this printable to put on the cover yes yes so until the time changes I think this orange is matching this orange actually all right what I'm going to do is probably do a little collage but I'll probably just do a little real cup doing the front I won't keep you guys any longer all right, friends, thank you so much for joining. Let me go ahead and put this here with the dimensions. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys were crafting. If you weren't, go ahead, make it, drop it in the group. I want to see what you guys create. All right, friends, bye.